Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Bartholomew the Apostle Church. We gather today to celebrate the sacred liturgy for the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Please stand and share a greeting with one another. Our presider is Father Mike, assisted by Deacon Matt. Please join in our entrance hymn, Immaculate Mary. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you this evening. Thank you. As I was coming up uh, the aisle and, and singing this beautiful hymn, a uh, very beautiful hymn to our Blessed Mother, I couldn't help but notice how beautiful uh, she looks here in our sanctuary, the statue, a very, very beautiful statue, don't you think? It's just, uh, just great to see her and to uh, just look into her beautiful face and her heart. So in that spirit, in celebration, of her as our mother. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate this mystery of Jesus' love for us, let us first acknowledge our sinfulness and our failures before God and one another. And let us with confidence and humility to prepare to receive from our gracious Father pardon for those sins. Lord Jesus, you have done great things for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise up the lowly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your mercy reaches to every age. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and the Peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, 
only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your divine Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we, your people, may merit to be sharers of her glory through our union with Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord the one who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was open, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky it was a large, huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come. And the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The Queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The Queen takes her place at your right hand, in gold of all fear. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The Queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. 
So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord. They are born in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead also came through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 Mary is taken up to heaven, a chorus of angels exalts. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. 
Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amid our daily trials and difficulties, in Mary, we are assured that there is hope in the life that is to come, that there is hope in heaven. Today, as we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we are invited to reflect upon the oldest feast day of the Virgin Mary, which commemorates her entry into heaven, body, and soul. As many of us know, Mary was conceived without original sin, to be the perfect vessel, to be the mother of Jesus Christ, the incarnate Word of God. All of whom Mary was, her body and her soul, was full of divine life. She was, as we familiarly hear in the Hail Mary, full of grace. Though it may be hard to believe in a mystery such as the Assumption of Mary, Together we believe and we affirm that Mary, the one who had given life to God in her womb here on earth, was likewise assumed into heaven by him. Though we may know the importance of this feast of the Assumption of Mary, we may be wondering how this special day matters in our own personal lives. By contemplating the Assumption, we not only look to the past, at the wondrous things that God has done in Mary's life, we look to the present and to the future. Today, the Feast of the Assumption is a reminder of new hope for each one of us. For all that God has done in the life of Mary, He desires to do and to give to each one of us. By becoming imitators of Mary, by becoming receptive to God's grace in our lives amid the difficulties and challenges that we face, we too are promised a place in heaven and the glory of the resurrection. In our first reading from the book of Revelation, we beautifully heard about two signs which point to the assumption of Mary in heaven. As the beloved disciple John was having a vision of heaven and the final days, he saw a glimpse of two Marian images, the Ark of the Covenant and the woman clothed with the sun. The Ark of the Covenant is the great Old Testament sign of God with man. As Moses and the people of Israel journeyed out of slavery into the Promised Land, they constructed the Ark which was considered the dwelling place of God. In it was contained the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments and the manna. John in this vision sees the Ark of the Covenant taken up in the temple of heaven. And rather than describing the beauty of the Ark or the Ten Commandments or even the manna, John goes on to illustrating a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of ten stars. In other words, John is describing the new Ark of the Covenant, taken up and assumed into the heavenly temple, not an Ark with the Word of God written in stone, but Mary the new Ark with the Word of God made flesh within her, not an Ark with hidden manna from the desert, but Mary the new Ark with the bread of life that comes from heaven. Just as Mary's destiny is wrapped up in being a dwelling place of God and being brought up into the heavenly kingdom, so too is our hope in being a dwelling place of God and to be with Him in heaven. In today's gospel, Mary reveals to us the path in, we, in which we are to reach our hope which is in heaven. 
Elizabeth, upon hearing Mary's greeting, is filled with the Holy Spirit, and the child in her womb, John the Baptist, leaps for joy. Elizabeth, experiencing the joy of Christ, and Mary proclaims, Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Mary believed that whatever the Lord spoke to her would come to pass, that she had an unwavering trust in his promises. And it was that trust that made it possible for Jesus to be made flesh in her womb. What comes next in our gospel is the key to understanding Mary as the sign of hope for you and for me. Instead of thinking that the weight of the world was on her shoulders or that she was the reason for her own blessedness, she recognized the source of grace, the source of courage, and the source of mercy in her life. Immediately after Elizabeth praises Mary as the mother of her Lord, Mary professes, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. The Almighty has done great things for me. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. What is it that we discover here? Mary's greatness is found in the greatness of God. Mary's perseverance through suffering unto heaven is found in the strength of God. Simply, Mary is the model who we are meant to be and who we are meant to become through God's grace. And we can take comfort in knowing that Mary was a small town girl, a wife, a mother, a disciple of her son. She was like each one of us. It was by saying yes to the Lord in her life that she was able to journey from the birth of Jesus all the way to his death on the cross. Because being full of grace like Mary does not mean never experiencing suffering, but it means being given the strength to endure it with the eyes of faith. A faith that assures us that God will always be faithful to his promises and the hope that we too will be received into the heavenly kingdom if we follow the footsteps of Mary, our mother. Friends, the invitation to you and I today is to trust in the grace of God to transform our lives and to direct us to his heavenly kingdom like Mary. Despite the challenges we each face in our own personal lives, in our homes, at work, with our neighbors, or in the coming school year, or even the many challenges we witness in our fragile world, God comes to each one of us this day, just as he came to Mary. Our response is to imitate hers, to say yes to our Lord. As we say amen to Jesus in the Eucharist this day, may we all like Mary, be filled with his grace to bring his presence to others and to reach our heavenly destiny. My sisters and brothers, as God's holy people, the church, let us now proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, joining our prayer of intercession for the world with the prayer of the Blessed Virgin Mary herself, let us turn our hearts to our loving God, the God of gentleness, the God of compassion. For the Church, that following in the footsteps of, the blessed, of our Blessed Mother, we may bring Christ to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, may a respect for all life from conception until natural death inform and govern their decisions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill in mind or body, for the grieving and the lonely, may they know God's great love for them and be freed from their pain and isolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by war or violence, especially the people of Afghanistan, may the spirit of peace work to end hostilities throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us gathered here, that we may see Mary's assumption into heaven as a sign of our promised glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they share in the glory of heaven with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Bartholomew, and the entire communion of saints. We remember especially Raymond Kirkma, Father Eugene Romano, Geraldine Inman, Father Oscar Martin Dominguez, and especially Maria Medrano and Ray Bertocci. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause to offer the Lord our own personal prayers within the silence of our hearts. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, may our souls proclaim your greatness always. Hear our prayer of intercession offered in faith and grant what we ask of you according to your holy will. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There will be one collection today. Envelopes for the Assumption should be placed in the basket along with your weekly offering.
My sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our loving and gracious Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all in God's holy church. May this oblation rise up to you, O loving God, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you yourself assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of her love, constantly long for you through our union with Jesus Christ, your Son, the one who lives forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our union with Jesus Christ the Lord. For this day, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and the image of your church is coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the one who is the author of all life. So in company with all the choirs of angels and saints, we your people praise you, and with joy we together proclaim. Holy, holy.
gracious and loving God, you are indeed holy and you are to be glorified. You who love the human race, you who always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your son, present always in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once were the disciples of old, so now for us his disciples present here, Jesus opens our scriptures, he breaks our bread, and he shares our cup. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took our bread. He said the blessing, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more he gave you thanks and praise. And he gave the chalice to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And so, most holy Father, as we, your holy people, together celebrate this memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, the one whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have now seated at your right hand, we, his people, the church, now proclaim the work of your love until Jesus returns. And we offer you this bread of life, this chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this Eucharistic mystery, loving Father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image and the likeness of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, women and men religious, and the entire holy people, the ones that you claim for your own. Grant that all the faithful in the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of your gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all our sisters and brothers throughout this world, that sharing their grief and their pain, their joy and their hope, we, your people, may faithfully bring them the gospel of salvation, and so go forward with them along the way to your kingdom. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in death in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them all to rejoice in the light of your holy face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, 
there in communion with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, the prophets, the martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through our union with Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. For it is through Christ and with him and in him, most loving and gracious God in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not let us come to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace to us in our days, that by the help of your compassionate and loving mercy, we, your people, may always be free from sin, safe from all distress and useless worry, as we await the blessed hope, the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles and disciples and say to us this evening, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but rather look upon the faith of your people, your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those like ourselves who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having together celebrated and received the sacrament of the body and the blood of the Lord, we ask you to grant, O loving Father, that through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you yourself assumed into heaven, that we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection as was she, through our union with Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, the one who lives forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain with us forever. 
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you. Oh 